Hinduism is believed to be the oldest, the first, and the eternal religion which has neither beginning nor end. It certainly is the oldest continuously practiced religion in the world. Nearly a billion are estimated Hindu worldwide, including about 80% of India's population, making it the third largest following. Kumbh Mela, a Hindu pilgrimage to the Ganges River, is the single largest human gathering on Earth. It is claimed that there are more than three billion gods and goddesses, as all Hindus for the last 4,000 years, and probably more, have believed in whatever god they like. There is no founder, or date of origin, or unified set of beliefs or practices. You might be devoted to God, or gods, or believe the creator is Shiva, or Vishnu, or Shakti, or the Triad, or all of them plus more, or none. Or worship the Brahman within, or the Brahman of the heavens, or all or none of the Brahman. You might believe in monotheism, polytheism, dualism, or monism. You might be deist, agnostic, or even atheist. But you probably believe there's one transcendent supreme being responsible for both the created and unmanifested. You probably believe in the divinity of revealed scripture, specifically the Vedas, which are the most ancient, but also other scriptures which are equally revealed and less ancient. You probably believe in three worlds of existence, the physical, the astral, and the causal, and that the universe undergoes endless cycles of creation and dissolution. You probably believe in karma, and that the individual's destiny is determined by their thoughts, words, and deeds. You probably believe that all beings have a soul, and souls advance to bodies with higher abilities such as humans, and that the soul reincarnates until all karmas have been resolved, spiritual knowledge is attained, and liberation is achieved, otherwise known as moksha, and also that every single soul will eventually achieve this destiny. You probably believe in divine beings, unseen worlds, temple worship, rituals, sacraments, and creating a relationship with a multitude of divas and gods and worlds. You probably believe that discipline, good conduct, purification, pilgrimage, self-inquiry, and meditation are essential to know the transcendent absolute and a spiritually awakened master or guru or brahman who guides you is also important. You probably believe that all life is sacred, to be loved and revered, and therefore practice ahisma or non-injury. You probably believe that no one religion is above all others or teaches the only way to salvation and all are deserving of understanding. Then there's the caste system, which also appears in ancient text. The Varna system includes four classes, the Brahmins, or priests, as well as rulers, tradesmen, and finally the laborers. The Jati caste system has thousands of different rankings based on occupational, economical, and even geographical factors. The British Empire used and expanded the existing caste systems in India as a tool for segregation and discrimination based primarily, though not exclusively on affiliation and dedication to Christianity. A Hindu must follow their dharma, which is the way, or your way, your path in the cycle, your place in the cosmic order. It is religious duty, or duty to family, or self, or community, or nature, or all of these. It is your individual rights and your responsibility to learn and be helpful, encompassing the rules that guide the morality of all human beings and political, legal, and social harmony, or whatever, etc, etc. It's just dharma. It's your dharma. Hindu scripture dates as far back as 1500 BCE. There are thousands of verses gathered into dozens of collections by many different traditions. The oldest is the Vedas, which itself is divided into four texts, the oldest of which is the Rig Veda Samhita. It is about 10,600 verses covering about 50 different gods, but primarily ritual sacrifices to gods of nature. Later on, the nature of hymns shift from praise of deities to philosophical questions such as what is the origin of the universe? Do even gods know the answer? 
By 700 BCE, with the Upanishads, a philosophical focus had emerged leading into Jainism and Buddhism, as well as other texts such as the Sutras and the Vedanta philosophy, which literally means end of the Vedas. From as far back as the 8th century BCE, in the Chandogya Upanishad 3.14.1 to 3.14.4, our ancestors tell us, This whole universe is Brahman. In tranquility let one worship it, as that from which he came forth, as that into which he will be dissolved, as that in which he breathes. Man is a creature of his will and purpose. Let him therefore have for himself this will this purpose. The intelligent, whose body is imbued with life and principle, whose form is light, whose thoughts are driven by truth, whose self is invisible but ever-present, from whom all works, all desires, all sensory feelings encompassing this whole world, the silent, the unconcerned, this is me, myself, my soul within my heart. This is my soul in the innermost heart, greater than the earth, greater than this space, greater than these worlds. This soul, this self of mine, is that Brahman. This is why we should talk about Hinduism. It encompasses our oldest ideas of reality, God, and society. It reaches back to our earliest history and beyond. It permeates all religion and shows us the path to transcend it. At the moment of creation, Brahman uttered the first sound, the sacred syllable, the yes, the cause and song of the universe, the infinite all-encompassing truth and ultimate reality, the finest essence of life, the sun, the whole world, the self, the vehicle of deepest knowledge, the immortal sound of the fearless, and he who flies for refuge in it becomes also immortal, just as the gods are immortal. Oh.